Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is So. For today's video, we are going to be doing a book haul. Now, as much as I don't like to admit it, I did turn 25 last week. Um, so the books I'm going to be showing you guys are books that I have bought either from birthday money or have been gifted to me for my birthday. I do have about 16 plus books here. I did go on a little bit of a book haul shopping trip, but I'm very excited about all of them. And so I'm just gonna get straight into telling you what I picked up. So the first book I'm gonna talk about is actually Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I bought this with my birthday money, but it is actually for a little book club that me and my friends have kind of started, the No Beef Just Books book club, and this was our first read, so that's why it's got a bookmark in it already, because I am currently reading it, we're doing monthly reads, so August is this one here. This was highly spoken about, but it was never really on my radar. It's not something that I would normally go to because I'm very much a fantasy, fantasy romance girly. But I was like, you know what? I'll give it a go. I need to try some new things sometimes. So I picked this one up to read it with my friends and I'm actually really enjoying it. It follows the Prince of Wales and the first son of the President of the United States. And it is a gay romance and it's very witty and funny and I'm just really enjoying it. It basically follows them after a publicity situation where they kind of had like a bit of a altercation and they have to kind of pretend to be friends in order to make both the president and the monarchy look good again and it just follows on from there. So yeah, really enjoying it. Definitely will finish it soon. The only thing I'm not enjoying about it is how much political jargon there is, but I'm hoping it kind of becomes like the underbelly of the story and the actual main story and the characters like come out more, which will be fine. I can deal with it like a little bit here and there, but it's like, it was a lot at the start is all I'm saying. Next up we have Queen of Myth and Monster by Scarlett St. Clair. This is the sequel to A King of Battle and Blood, which I really, really enjoyed. So I was very excited when I saw this in the bookshop because I completely forgot that I needed to con continue the series. So when I saw it, I was like, okay, well I have to get you. And this is actually the Waterstones exclusive, which it came out a while ago. So I'm surprised there's any left. So here is my copy of King of Battle and Blood. I think I got this one from Amazon to be fair. And this is the sequel here. If you don't know, King of Battle and Blood follows a girl who is set to marry the king of the vampire kingdom. And she's actually doing it with the mindset that she's going to get close enough to kill him and free her kingdom from being like under his thrall. But it doesn't really go that way. And that's all I'm going to say. So this one is just the carry on from this one. And I'm very excited to carry on with their story because it was so good. Like, so good. Then we have The Last Dragon King by Leia Stone. This is book one in what I believe is a trilogy, or at least there's three books out. I haven't heard anyone talk about this, honestly, but I saw it on the table. And because of Fourth Wing, I'm very much in a dragon mood. And to be honest with you, before Fourth Wing came out, I was looking for like a really good dragon fantasy book and then that got really hyped so that's actually why i ended up reading it and so i'm looking for another sort of vampire book that will give me the same sort of feelings and this one just was on a table in waterstones and i never heard anyone talk about it but there is three books out and it just says here the dragon king is looking for a wife the news causes a frenzy for the women in my village. The king will be sending out the royal guard to bring women of the childbearing age to his castle in Jade City. There is only one requirement. His wife-to-be must carry enough magic to produce an heir for him. I know I won't be chosen. I'm only human with a mere 10% dragon magic lineage. But for some reason, the magic sniffers command me to present myself to the king as a possible wife. I'm ready to go to Jade City until my mother tells me a terrifying secret. A secret that could get me killed by the king himself. So doesn't that just sound so fun? Like if he's, I don't know if he's like a dragon shifter, but literally anything with dragons in, I'm just going to eat up at the moment. Next up, shouldn't be a surprise because if you've been watching my videos recently, I know there's not been many, but if you have been watching my videos recently, you'll know that I read Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and just fell in love with Taylor Jenkins reads. I recently read Daisy Jones and the Six and again got the same like happiness from reading it so I thought I'd finish the set off 
and get Carrie Soto is back. This follows a sort of ex-tennis championship because there's a new young tennis player that's beating her record, I think. Yeah, she watches a young British tennis player steal her world record and Carrie knows she has to go back and reclaim her rightful place at the top, even if the world doesn't believe in her, even if it almost breaks her. This is a story about the cross of greatness and the burden of fame. The fight for a place in history is about to begin, so. I have heard that there's a lot of tennis jargon in her and that people who don't really like tennis, don't really know tennis, have not enjoyed it as much as some of her other ones. I do still need to read Malibu Rising as well, but I'm willing to give it a go, you know? The next book is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is one that I've honestly been thinking about for a while about picking it up, especially with it being kind of about the villains. And I'm surprised it's taken me this long, to be honest, but here we are. So this story follows two characters who start out as college roommates, but then something happens which kind of tears them apart. And then years later, one of them breaks out of prison, determined to catch up to his old friend Nalfo, aided by a young girl with a stunning ability. Meanwhile, Eli is on a mission to eradicate every other superpowered person that he can find, aside from his psychic, an enigmatic woman with an unbreakable will. Armed with terrible powers on both sides, driven by the memory of betrayal and loss, the arch nemesises have set course for revenge. But who will be left alive at the end? So they're trying to like they're trying to find a way that somebody that people can develop extraordinary abilities, like superpowers, and then something goes wrong. They become sort of enemies and then we come back to present time. So yeah, very excited. I do feel like I will really enjoy this. I don't know why I didn't just pick up the second book but we shall see when I read it. Then we have Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. Honestly, again, another one that I'm surprised I haven't picked up before now. I've heard a lot of good things about it. It just hasn't been one that I have purchased in the past, but I thought it was about time. And you know, Amazon had a deal where you could get all four books for like 23 pounds, which is a bargain, but I didn't get it because what if I really don't like this book? I'm trying to be sensible and just get the first book unless I absolutely know I'm gonna adore it. So this follows a girl whose brother is arrested in the dead of night for treason and her loved ones are slain. So she goes undercover as a slave in the in the empire's greatest military academy in exchange for assistance from those who claim that they can save her brother from execution. And then there's another character who is a soldier, but he, although he's fighting for this side, he doesn't really want to, he's very much on the opposition. He just wants to flee. And then before he's able to act on his desertion plans, he's ordered to participate in a ruthless contest to choose the next martial emperor. And then their paths collide and they realize that they are like destined or their destinies are intertwined, which I love. If you have any fantasy romance recs, please leave them down below because I just need all the fantasy romance that I can get my hands on. Then we have Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Now, again, I'm surprised I haven't read this before, but I do have Empire of the Vampire. Empire. I have the fairy loot edition. It was on my TBR like two months ago, but the size of it literally put me off. It was too <laughs> overwhelming to start a big book like that at the time. So I thought I will start with some of this and then maybe that will tell me whether I'm gonna like his writing or not. I don't know if this one is YA or adult. There may be a slight difference in there. Basically, it follows a girl who is destined to destroy the empire and she's raised in shadows and has made a promise to herself that she's gonna avenge herself for everything that she lost. So I'm assuming her family like got killed or something. And to do this, she seeks training among the infamous assassins in the Red Church of Itria. Inside the church's halls, Mia must prove herself against the deadliest of opponents and survive the tutelage of murderers, liars, and demons at the heart of a murder cult. The church is no ordinary school, but Mia is no ordinary student. Love the school setting. The assassin setting reminds me very much of Throne of Glass and I am currently on Air of Fire of Throne of Glass and absolutely loving it. So I think that's another reason why I picked this one up because it does give me like those kind of vibes. I didn't bring a drink, I'm hot. Next up is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I haven't seen this talked about anywhere, but I found it in, I first saw it in Waterstones, but I didn't get it until I ordered it when I got back home. And it basically follows a world where there is the elites and the ordinaries. The elites are like up here in society. The ordinaries are below like dirt. They are basically banished from society. The elites are people given abilities from something they call the plague. I don't know what that is yet. Um, but basically our main character is pretending to be a psychic so that she can live among the elites 
but one day she accidentally saves a prince's life and they throw her into a competition. She's thrown into the Persian Trials, a brutal competition that's showcasing the elite's powers, but obviously she doesn't have any powers and she's worried about what the prince is gonna do when he finds out that she is completely ordinary. I think that sounds really good and I think this is going to be quite a popular book once it's been read a little bit more. Cause like I said, I haven't heard anyone talk about it, but I think it sounds really good and like something that TikTok would pick up. We then have Dragonfall by L.R. Lamb. This is just following in my dragon, my dragon vibes. So this is based in a world where centuries ago, humans betrayed the dragons, they captured them, they stole their magic. And then fast forward to the present time, the humans now see dragons as the gods, but the dragons, the gods, have not forgotten what they went through and they kind of take, you know, revenge on the current times. I think it sounds really really fun. Then this one was actually a gift bought for me and gifted to me and I'm not going to talk about it too much because of the whole issues around the author but I did get Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets the illustrated edition illustrated by Jim Kay so it's just a story but it has these stunning like illustrations throughout I already had the first one so this was the next one I needed and I'm very excited to add it to my collection we're on the last pile we then have Fr Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellors I have heard so much about this book by multiple people I'm pretty sure Kat from Bambina Katrina has read this and I'm sure somebody else has read it as well and loved it so I finally caved and picked it up I honestly don't know if it's going to be my type of book obviously like you know like I keep saying I'm very much a fantasy reader so a lot of fiction and contemporary romance and things like that don't like I'm not drawn to them I have to really like read it until I can get into them but I thought it sounded interesting so I thought I'll give it a go if you didn't know, this is about a girl who is kind of like, she's the life of the party, she goes out partying every night, but her student visa is very quickly running out and she doesn't even have the money for her cigarettes. So when she encounters a guy named Frank on New Year's Eve, he is successful and 20 years older and can give her the security she craves and the green card she needs and in Cleo he sees a life filled with beauty, art and freedom and then they rush into this like headlong marriage and their friends are drawn into its tumultuous orbit what began as a chance meeting will change all their lives forever so it's like a fake marriage kind of trope I'm assuming it probably turns into a real marriage at some point or maybe it'll go in the complete opposite direction and just crash and burn I don't know but I am intrigued I'm really excited about this next one. It's What Lies Beyond the Veil. I've heard quite a few people talking about this. I honestly thought I owned this, but I don't. For some reason, I thought it had been a fairy loot book recently. But this is a fey fantasy romance. So naturally, I had to pick it up. I honestly almost grabbed the other two books in the trilogy, but I didn't. I behave. So this is based in a world where there's this veil that protects the humans from the Fae and they worship new gods who val value purity and obedience above all. Our main character, Estella, she is kind of been brought up to be married and then the local Lord of Mistfell murders his wife so that he can claim Estella as his own wife. And she has the choice, she can either accept his offer or be sacrificed to the Veil. On the night that she is due to be sacrificed, the Veil shatters and leaves her marked um, as what they call like a fey mark she has to flee with her brother to avoid the miss guards who will kill her to stop the fey from taking her and she ends up running into another fey mark a broad and brooding callum with her life on the line he's a distraction she can little afford yet she can't stay away not even with something greater on the line her heart so i think that sounds really good i had to try so hard not to buy all three books because i think that just sounds so good and I'm, I know I'm gonna love it. I know I'm gonna love it. But I didn't. I behaved. And I only bought the first one. Next up is a witchy romance. And it's called A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. This basically follows a girl who is prophesied to be one of the most powerful witches. But all she wants to do is bake. She just wants to have a good time in the kitchen and bake some cakes. But she accidentally summons a demon for a soul bargain. <laughs> it happens. And this demon happens to be ruthless and a legend among his kind. And ever since a bargain went awry, he's been the laughing stock. 
A deal with Mario will earn back his deadly reputation. However, getting Mario to sign over her soul is going to be a lot harder than he anticipated. But he can't leave her side until the bargain is completed. And then, because they're spending so much time together, I guess feelings are going to happen. And he realises that if he does get her to sign the deal, then he'll be damning her for the rest of her life and potentially ruining the possibility of a relationship to, like, flourish. I'm very excited about it, and I'm pretty sure there is a sequel, because I saw it on NetGalley the other day. It was, like, a demon's guide to wooing a witch or something like that. So I can only assume it was a sequel to this one. Or maybe, like, another perspective. This one, I was a bit shook at because I saw it. Hadn't seen anything of it. It is a trilogy. I don't know if the others are out yet. No, they're not. So this is the first book in a trilogy. It's called A Crown of Ivy and Glass, and it's by Claire Legrand. This is the author that wrote Furyborn. And I was like, how have I not heard? I mean, I haven't read Furyborn either, but I know that Furyborn is quite a popular series and i thought nobody has said anything about this and look how chunky it is this is her adult debut and it says here lady Gemma ashbourne seemingly has it all she's young gorgeous and rich her family is also anointed by the gods blessed with incredible abilities but underneath her glittering facade Gemma is deeply sad years ago her sister mara was taken to the middle mist to guard against treacherous magic her mother abandoned the family and her father and elder sister farron embroiled in a deadly blood feud with the mysterious Basque family, often forget that Gemma exists. Worst of all, Gemma is the only Ashbourne to possess no magic. Instead, her body fights it like poison. Constantly ill, aching with loneliness, Gemma craves love and yearns to belong. Then, she meets the devastatingly handsome Talon Daspier. Seduced by a demon, his family destroyed themselves. Talon, the only survivor, is determined to redeem his family's honour. Intrigued and enchanted, Gemma proposes a bargain. She'll help Talon navigate high society if he helps her destroy the Basques. According to popular legend, a demon called the Man with the Three-Eyed Crown is behind the family's blood feud. Slay the demon, end the feud. But attacks on the Middle Mist are increasing. The plot against the Bass quickly spirals out of control, and something immense and terrifying is awakening in Gemma, drawing her inexorably towards Talon and, and an all-consuming passion that could destroy her or show her the true strength of her power at last. I know that was a lengthy one, but doesn't that sound so good? I already don't trust the guy. I like completely don't trust the guy but who am i to judge maybe i'm completely wrong i'm excited to read it and it's going to be a trilogy so if i love it i get to look forward to more coming out we're nearly there guys <laughs> so this one was actually a set that i got from the works if you are from the uk you know the works is the place to be and this is the never after series it basically takes well-known fairy tales and like disney stories and turns them into romances where the villain gets the girl so this one is called scar oh and they're all by emily mcintyre by the way so this one is called scarred and this is as far as i can tell it's a reimagining of the lion king story but obviously real people and it says here prince tristan was never dis destined for the throne that was always his brother michael the same brother responsible for both tristan's tormented childhood and the scar that mars his face when their father dies michael is set to assume the throne and tristan is set to steal it the leader of a secret rebellion tristan will stop at nothing to end his brother's reign but when michael's new betrothed lady sarah arrives tristan finds himself in the middle of a new kind of war the kind that begs the question of what's more important the crown or the woman about to wear it Sarah has one plan, marry the king and eradicate the Fassa line, even at the risk of her own peril. But she never expects the scarred prince. He's dangerous and forbidden, and one of the men she's been sent to kill. But the line between hatred and passion has never seemed so thin, and as secrets come to light, Sarah grows unsure of whom she can trust. Torn between vengeance and the villain she was never supposed to love. I think that sounds really, really fun. Definitely a fun version of The Lion King. The next one is Wretched, which is a reimagining of Wicked. And it follows a girl who is the brains and the brawn and the botanist behind her family's drug empire. And a man who comes to kind of work in the drug empire, but is actually an undercover agent. And he's trying to destroy the drug trade. But they end up having like a one night stand and although he's trying to bring down her family i think there might be some obstacles in the way 
The next one is Hooked, which is obviously about James Hook, as in, like, Captain Hook. And this one, I've honestly, this is the one that I looked up when I first picked up the series, because I've seen a lot of people talk about it, but I've never really paid attention to the reviews and the ratings that this was given. So I looked it up, and it actually had very mixed reviews, but... Honestly, I think, when I think of these, I just think of them being a fun time. I don't expect them to be, like, the world's greatest novel. I just expect to have a good time, a fun time, while reading them. And that's how I would rate them. But I think people are diving into, like, how good the writing is. How good the literature is. But I think, honestly, if you just go into it with the mindset of having a good time, then what's there to lose, honestly? This is obviously about James Hook, as in Captain Hook. And it says here, James has always had one agenda destroy his enemy, Peter Michaels. When Peter's 20-year-old daughter, Wendy, shows up in James's bar, he sees his way in. Seduce the girl and use her for his revenge. It's the perfect plan until things in James's organisation begin to crumble. Suddenly, he has to find the traitor in his midst, and his plan for revenge gets murkier as James starts to see Wendy as more than just a pawn in his game. Wendy has been cloistered away most of her life by her cold, wealthy father, but a spontaneous night out with friends turns into an intense and addictive love affair with the dark and brooding James. As much as she knows James is dangerous, Wendy can't seem to shake her desire for him. But as their relationship grows more heated and she learns more about the world he moves in, she finds himself unsure if she's fallen for the man known as James or the monster known as Hook. That sounds like a fun time to me. I don't get why it gets so much hate. I mean, like I said, is it going to be the best written literature in the world? Probably not. Is it going to be a fun time? I sure hope so. And the last one is Twisted, which I believe is Aladdin inspired. It basically follows a girl named Yasmin, who is daughter to one of the richest men in the world, which to me sounds a little bit like the story of Aladdin. But her father falls ill and his last wish, his dying wish, is that she marries the man of his choosing. However, she is already in love with a servant, which is a man her father would never consider for her. He wants her to be married to a wealthy man like himself. So Yasmin strikes a desperate deal with her father's right hand man, Julian, not realising he has his own twisted agenda. Julian has one goal, become the most powerful man in the world. He's built a future from broken bones and faded bruises, never caring who he hurt along the way. But when his mentor falls ill, he finds himself on the verge of losing everything and he'll stop at nothing to inherit what is rightfully his even if it means forcing a woman he can't stand into marriage. Yasmin is a brat who speaks out of turn and he's the villain of her story, but he decides she'll be his, no matter what it takes to convince her. So that's like another fake dating trope, love it. And then finally we have a graphic novel, which I'm very excited I found, and that is part four, or volume four of Laura Olympus by Rachel Smith. If you don't know what this is by now, first of all, where have you been? The second of all, it's basically a bunch of webtoons that follow the mutual pining of Hades and Persephone and some of the characters and like Greek gods and goddesses that are around them. And honestly, it's so good. It's such a fun time and I just honestly love them. I'm a bit late to this one to be honest because I'm pretty sure number five is out now, but I hadn't seen it like any time I'd been in a shop physically and I like to make sure that it's the same sort of style as my other copies which you don't necessarily get if you order online so yeah that is it from me today guys that is all the books that I acquired in one way or another for my birthday if you have read any of these books please tell me what you thought about them I really would love to know and hear your thoughts if you've had any good reads recently also drop them below let me know what you're reading, what you plan to read in August. And don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you like this video because it really, really helps. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave so you don't miss my next video. Bye, guys.